Actually, I, um, I don't want to introduce you to Blacklane too much because I hope that um, by now, after all those years and hard work we've put into it, it's um, pretty well known. Can I ask for your hands if you have been in a Blacklane or you know who we are and what we do? Ah, oh, that's not good enough, I must say. So we are introducing it now um, a little. But I will keep it short. Actually, we were here um, a, a year ago, and we were introducing Blacklane in more length. Um, I found it was uh, pretty boring to repeat it this, this year. So um, there's a bit of more competitive intelligence that you might find interesting after all those IPOs that we have seen just recently. And uh, we are trying to compare us um, to some of the players. But let me start with an exciting thing that is actually our new brand that we have launched last week. And I'm happy to share this video with you, kind of a sneak preview, if it works. How do you like this? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So it's not electric scooters, as you can see, but we do cars. Um, we probably go into the air um, um, rather sooner than later, um, but we are not producing it. We are chauffeur service. We started seven years ago um, with a pretty simple idea that we want to provide the first and the last mile to our um, heavy users. I was one of those myself, um, and we figured we want to start something that is, uh, that is changing the hassle of uh, getting from A to B, um, especially in foreign destinations. So to give you a sense of um, where we are by now, um, in 2012 we started, um, and, uh, and we started in Berlin, then expanding throughout the world. We figured we are not an intercity short distance mobility provider, but we are rather a, um, a long distance travel companion. Yeah, so we are closing the first and last mile of everybody's travel. So in 2013, 14, and also against some um, some investors' opinions. We were um, just heavily scaling and internationalizing our, our services. And by now, uh, we are present in, uh, down there in over 300 cities, more than 65 countries, um, going where our uh, guests actually need us um, and serving their first and last mile needs. By office presence, we are now in a handful of uh, cities. We started in Berlin, um, but we are now also live in uh, present with offices in Barcelona, Dubai, Singapore, and Brisbane. This year, we are uh, launching our incorporation in the States. Um, funny enough, actually, we never put so much effort into the United States, but they are by far the largest country that we serve. Um, so every third right, every third dollar of revenue is coming from this region. It's by far our single biggest country that we serve. Um, our ambition is to get more and more into the, into the travel industry. It's not just the pure ground transportation piece, but we really have the ambition to, to serve our guests on a door-to-door -door basis. Nothing is coincidence. Um, we want to control every single detail. We want to make sure that the guest is always protected and safe in a, in a com convenient and comfortable environment. And, um, and we, are, we are serving to all his needs. Basically, we want to pick you up from the doorstep and then following all the way through until you reach your destination and uh, coming back home a couple of days later. We do it by actually two main strengths um, and that has been with us since, since quite the early beginning. Uh, we are very strong, I believe, when it comes to the quality component. I think this is so much embedded into our DNA um, that we serve um, the guests to our best possible efforts. Um, and we almost like behave and depend, not even almost, we behave and depend as if we are the supplier, as if the cars are ours, as if the chauffeurs are our employees. Actually, we call them crew because they are so close to us. We treat them and we feel them to be our, our colleagues. And this is what you also sense when you are booking a black lane, when you ride with us, you will see how rigidly we have selected the vehicles. Um, how much we put into training of uh, the third-party chauffeurs that we put on our platform um, to deliver this five-star service. So quality is one component. The other component that we were um, focusing on in the last years is actually the innovation. Um, so we... Oh, I'm in the shadowing. 
So the, in, the, the uh, innovation piece is uh, as much important as the, as the quality for us. Um, we were, um, had a couple of first um, initiatives that um, others followed, um, but to pick some of those examples, the instant confirmation, for instance, booking guarantee is something that the industry has never seen before. Um, uh, so when you place a booking, it's always been served, and this is also logistically and from a dispatching nature a quite difficult task. Think of all-inclusive rates as well. Like, there's never be a surprise. You always know what you pay. And, um, and uh, this is very important for planning reliability of our frequent travelers. Last but not least, we were the first ground transportation provider that started a carbon offset program. So every single emission of carbon is being offset by, by this program that our, our cars are still unfortunately uh, emitting. Um, plus, we are shifting more and more towards what we call the green class um, that is running purely on electric vehicles. So quality and uh, innovation, that's, that's what we stand for. Now let us look into a little, um, a li little more into the competition. Um, and I want to pick two, um, two corners of the competitive lens landscape um, out, which is once uh, the legacy limousine service industry. This is the industry we are competing with when it comes to quality. They really have learned over the years and decades what quality is. And, um, and therefore, we are, of course, competing with them. Um, however, the legacy limousine industry is very bad when it comes to innovation, when it comes to technology. And if you are not living up to the standards of innovation and technology, this is actually the picture that you are ending up with. This is a comparison of the rates of some of the most, of the, of the biggest um, legacy limousine services around the world. Most of them are based in the US, compared to uh, what Blacklane is actually able to provide, thanks to the dispatching technologies, the technology um, redu reduction of overhead, and so on, that we have uh, brought, brought to the table. And if you pick Berlin, for example, I hope none of you have selected a legacy limousine player to get here. Um, so if you have, please take a black lane back to the airport. Yeah, but um, being able to cut the rates of an industry that is um, $20 billion worth by a th to, a, to a third of it is quite, a, quite an achievement. That's legacy. I think we have clearly shown you that uh, the legacy industry has difficulties to catch up with this. Um, now let's look into what we were all watching um, in the couple of uh, weeks and, and months behind, that is the ride-hailing industry. We've seen the IPOs of Uber and Lyft. Everyone was waiting for it. Um, how are they going to develop and so on? And I also want to pick some comparison of Black Lane between the ride-hailing industry. It's not going to be about price, but it's going to be about unit economics. I think this is uh, massively interesting if you look into the unit economics of a Lyft or Uber um, compared to ours. What I'm showing you now is actually public information on the ride-hailing piece. It's confidential information, not public on the black line piece, so don't tell anybody. Um, so let's walk up the P&L, if you don't mind. We are starting with a contribution margin. That's actually the net take rate that we have minus marketing, sales, and operations expenses. So Blackline is able to deliver a 10% contribution margin. Right-hailing industry, unfortunately, is only able to provide half a percentage. That's a factor of 20 in between, which is massive. Let's go climb up one ladder further, which is the take rate. Take rate is basically the gross bookings minus the payouts to the drivers, minus uh, any cost of revenue, discounts, commissions, rebates, and so on. So we are sitting at 25%, right-hailing at only 10. Now, one of the most interesting pieces, and this is also how you see where we compare in the industry setup, is the average ticket size. A black lane ride on an average global basis is worth $110. Um, that's certainly not happening in Berlin, but we are rather concentrate on longer distances worldwide. So this is our average distance. The right-hailing industry is at 11. Yes, it's another factor of 10 in between. So if you calculate this all through, and I find this quite um, amazing, actually, in order to get 10 euro, a $10 contribution margin out of, out of this equation, Blacklane needs to deliver not even one ride, 
but a ride hailing provider needs to deliver 180 rides for the same amount of bottom line impact. Yeah? So 200 for every black lane ride. Oh, no photos. That's, con that's a secret. No, no, just kidding. Um, so 200 more rides um, are necessary for the same uh, bottom line impact. And I think this is largely showing you how, um, how different we are. It's actually not. I, mean, I don't have a time here, right? I don't see where, where I'm going. Am I good? A bunch of more slides. So it's not stopping here. Um, also look at uh, supply base, demand base. Very interesting to see. And I think this is also showing uh, how healthy or not healthy business models are. If you are a marketplace, you depend on the loyalty of the um, supply base, of your partners. Blacklane is very happy that 85% of our chauffeurs are with us um, after a year serving, serving with, together with us. Um, now in the right handing space, unfortunately, only 20% of the drivers retain. Um, and I think that's a, that's a pretty broken situation that needs to be solved. Otherwise, you're pouring money and money and money into this. On the customer side, actually, demand side, a black lane customer is profitable after three months, a right hailing one after two years. So where do we get from here? Talking about quality, talking about innovation, we are now looking into further enhancing the travel experience, not just chauffeur services, but also looking into all sorts of stress makers in the travel chain. That is, first and foremost, the airport concierge service. Um, so we pick customers up from the door of the airplane, channeling them through fast track immigration, um, uh, priority lounge access, and so on, in order to really make them um, stress-free and uh, taking the best out of, out of their travel. And there are many, many industries and verticals that are still looking for that kind of disruption. Good. So I think this is where we are. Um, I have started with a video. I am going to end with a, with a video as well. Um, this is actually a sneak preview to the launch campaign that we start tomorrow in order to penetrate um, um, the, the social media, social networks with our, um, our new brand identity. Uh, maybe you've seen some of the funds of um, our beloved competitors. Enjoy and thank you very much.